Hey friends, Patrick God here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to this new video. Thank you very much for clicking on the title because this thing here, this is interesting. This is actually part of the latest bonus update to my Blazor e-commerce course. If you're not enrolled already, sorry for the little commercial, check out the, the banner here and the video description for the link or just stay with me for watching this update or check out this info card here for a preview of the complete big, big, big Blazor e-commerce course in there. I think you get three to four hours when I remember correctly of this course. So maybe this is something for you. But in this update now, what we're going to do is we will add a feature where you will be able to upload multiple images to your products. Now in this e-commerce application of this course, you will have some products who would have guessed, right? And uh, until now you were only able to use a URL, a link to an image. And now with this update, you will be able to upload images from your hard disk and store them as base 64 strings in your database. So this is what you're going to do. And additionally, we will use Mutt Blazor. So install Mutt Blazor, Blazor, Mutt Blazor, introduce it a little bit and then use the carousel among other components to display the images. So this is what we're going to do. And if you like that and maybe learn something, then first maybe check out the course or you stay with me here on this or in this great community on my channel. And in that case, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to hit the bell icon here to get a notification when a new video is online. Currently every single week on Tuesday, I try to upload a new video. Apart from that, maybe the newsletter is interesting for you because if you are a subscriber to my newsletter, then you get early access to my upcoming courses and you also get early access to these YouTube videos here and also discounts. So maybe this is interesting for you. And the last thing, empty coffee but still thank you so so much to all my supporters getting me some coffee because this is the only way i am able to stay awake and make all these videos here so thanks again and now i hope you're ready to enjoy the tutorial but one hint again this is part of the e-commerce course so you're not starting from scratch but still maybe this is not hands-on for you in this case but maybe you will still get something out of it and see the implementations and uh, yeah would love to to hear read see your comments about all that what you think about that so thank you very much already and now enjoy the tutorial all right so since we are now not in a situation where we only have one image for a product we need to add another model and that would be the image model let's have a real quick look here again here's our product model it it, uh, it is a bit bigger maybe. So here we see the image URL, right? So this is the URL for only one single image. In essence, there is not really a relationship between another entity in the database. It's just it's just a string, just a field in the, in the product table then for the image URL. Now we want to have a list of images. So the first thing again, we create a new model, new item in this case, well, we could have used a new class doesn't really matter here, but make sure to select class here. And we simply call this image, right? And there it is again, we make this public. And now the first property is as almost always an ID. And the next and already last thing is a string. And we call this data and by default, this is an empty string because we will use, and yes, we want to rebuild this when we change something, we want to use base64 strings, right? So we are not storing the actual file on the server. We can also do that, of course. But in our case, we will turn the image into a base64 string and store that in an actual field in the database table. But we're not done here. We've got our image model. And the next thing now is we have to add it here. So maybe below the image URL, we add prop and then a list of image. Now we call this images and let's say by default, this is a new empty list of the image type. And with that, we are done with the new model and we can add another migration next. Now, before we start a new or add a new migration, 
we stop our application here. So just close the, uh, the uh, command line interface here or the terminal or whatever it is. And then we go to our data context first. Short hint, it is actually not really necessary to do that because we have the relationship defined here between these models. But when we do this manually, we make sure that the name of the table is the name we want. So it's also, I think, more maintainable when we just add the DB set here. So in the data context, you should already know that when you watch the whole course, then we just add a new DB set of type image. And again, we just pluralize the name of this entity and this is then called images. And this is what we have to do in the code. And now we can add another migration. So again, are we in the proper directory? Seems like that, all right. So now let's just run .NET EF migrations and then add images. All right, this worked. And now let's have a quick look again at our migrations folder. And here it is. We see the new table with an ID and the data. And now again, for the relationship, we see ng framework is creating the product ID field here. And this is also the foreign key. So I would say, let's update the database again with .NET EF database update. All right, this is done. And now let's have a quick look here. We refresh the database. We've got our images table now here. And with add 200 row, added 200 rows, we see the ID, the data, and the product ID. All right, so this worked now. And next, we implement creating a new product with multiple images because this is a bit easier than updating. So this is the first thing we do. We create a new product with multiple images. All right, now to be able to create a new product with multiple images, we first go to our client project here and then in the pages folder, and then admin, we've got our edit product razor file. And down here, we see the input text for the image URL and also the field where we want to display the actual image. But now what we want to do is we want to check is the image URL set. So do we get a value in the image URL or for the image URL? And then in that case, we display this image here. And if not, we check if we've got images or we just assume that we've got a list of images. So we do not want to use the actual image URL here. We want to use all these images we have uploaded and stored in the database. So first we use an if case, of course, an if clause, sorry. And then what we have to do is we will add the input file component to well allow allow or enable the user to upload to upload multiple files all right so the first thing that we can do is instead of just displaying the image url here we add our if clause so add if and now if the string is not null or empty meaning the string here product image URL. And then in this case, uh, this thing stays the same in essence. And else, what we do is we start a for each. And for every image in our product images, we say, again, image source but not um, product image URL. In this case, this will then be add image and then data. Again, this will be the base 64 string, right? And another thing now is again, the input file component. So in essence, we can copy this 
paste it down here. We call this maybe images, for instance. And then it's not an input text, it's an input file. And let's say the ID is now images. Same here. And now we do not have a bind value here. The class form control is okay. Another thing we want to add is this little keyword here, multiple. So with that, we enable the user to select multiple files. And the last thing now, maybe the most important one is on change. So for the on change event, we will call a function and this could be called on file change for instance or on files change this is totally up to you and of course there's an error now because we haven't implemented this method yet but we will do that in a second just to recap real quick we still have our image url and input text fields here and now we just check if the image url is set we display this thing here but if we want to use images that the user upload it then we will display these here and also we will uh, use this input file component all right and now for this method here we scroll way down and on the bottom of this page now we create this function with async task and then on file change and this thing gets an argument actually so this would be input file change event arguments and in here now what we want to do is we uh, want to grab every single file that is uploaded and these files come with this event and then we again we start a for each loop and then we will resize the image we will create a buffer from that buffer we will create a stream and then with the help of all that we can create the actual base64 string which is our image data all right but the first thing is a format so we can actually define the image png format that we are going to use and then again with the for each we say for each image in and that's important the e this is our event and then get multiple files and here we could say we uh, want to use a maximum file count so for instance 10 or if you want to actually don't recommend the, recommend this but of course you could also say integer max value so the users uh, yeah they can upload a couple of files in this case all right, and I think there's a parenthesis missing. Yep, now this should work. All right, and now again, we resize this image with bar resized image is weight image and then not a dot image and then request image file async. Here we uh, provide the format and then let's say for the uh, size we just say 200 and 200 so that's not too big but this would then be our resized image then we create a buffer with new byte so this is a byte array with resized image and then the size of that thing and the next step again we say resized image open read stream so this is our stream and here we say read async buffer all right and now we can create our image data with var image data and this is a string so we're going to use the string interpolation here data colon and then the format and after that we say base 64 and after that we say convert to base 64 string and this method gets our buffer here and that's it so with that we've got the image data for this specific image and the last thing of course we say product 
images and then add. And in here now we say new image where we set the data to image data actually. No, this is correct, not image date. This should be image data. And with that, we are done. We save this and we can actually test this already. All right, here's our application already reloaded. And as you can see here, we've got an image URL. So this is displayed now, but we already got our input file component, right? So let's create a new product. And this time maybe let me have a quick look. What about the Lord of the Rings? All right, so simply the Lord of the Rings it is. And uh, regarding the category, this is books. Maybe we can also open the console so we see what is actually going on here. So to the network tab, maybe we've got the category, we've got the Lord of the Rings as a title. And let me just copy paste this here from Wikipedia. So we've got our description, maybe also a variant paper bag, what about the price, 99. So this is an expensive book, but maybe it's a series. So, and now let's choose some files here. There we are. And as you can see, I prepared some images. So let's just select all of them, open this. And as you can see there, they are, well, design is not that nice here actually, but we will change that later. So we've got five files and I would say we just create this product. So create product and there it is. And let's have a look at the payload here now. There you can see it images five images with all the base 64 strings isn't that nice and when we get the product back so this is what we see here with edit the lord of the rings now we see that there are actually no images right of course we have to include them but first let's double check here in our database, we execute the SQL. You see data is null. This is because of the SQL Server Management Studio. But what we can do is we can also right click the images table and then say select top 200 rows. And now we see all our base 64 strings. All right, so this works just fine. And the next step now is to actually again include the images now when we read our products. So let's do that next. All right, now including all the images is done in our server project now in the, uh, where is it, the product service. So as you can see here, we've got lots of method, methods, functions, where we wanna read and receive the products. But now we also have to include the images because there is a relationship between a product, a single product and many, images so again the one to many relationship and we have to tell entity framework to load these images so first thing let's have a look for all the methods so we've got get a product async this should be the first one and in here now we simply add dot include and then for the product we include the images like that. And this is what we can actually copy and edit here as well. Then we've got the get admin products. I think, yep, it's up here. So edit here as well, get administrator products, then get featured products as well. Then we've got get products, not get products, but also get products with an S. So this is where we have to include the images. Then we've got get products by category. And then the last one, search products. And here also after the variants, we add the images. All right, let's save this now. 
it should be rebuilt actually yep there it is and yep now we get all the images here and now let's have a look in our books because it's a book we don't see it here well this is because we haven't changed the page here yet of course but the important thing now is when we have a look here again at the call so maybe we can uh, remove this and reload again there's now the web service call we see that the images are here and the same here in the category books we get a lot of the rings and also we load the images. Okay, so this is the important part. The images are included now. And the next thing we wanna do is we wanna update the product images and also remove the images again. So let's do that next. Okay, now to update the images. We are already at the right place here in our product service and here in the update product by the way i don't know, don't know why there was a breakpoint maybe i just hit f9 on the keyboard a uh, keyboard i don't know so anyways update product we've got the find async method here but problem is that we get no images with that so what we have to do is we change this method here so it's now products and then i want to include the images again so p for product and then images okay we don't need the dot here like that this is what i wanted to do all right okay we're not done yet format this in a minute and after including we just say first or default async where the product id equals the given product id and now the formatting works all right so this is what i actually wanted to do and maybe we can change that again okay so this looks better i guess again products context products we include the images and then first or default async where the ids match and now down here after we update all the properties here and before we uh, update the variants we want to update the products and actually the easiest way to do this really is we remove all the products really remove delete the entry in the database for this specific product and then add all the images back again because we have no functionality here, no feature where we update, remove, add the images directly. Meaning uh, when we upload an image, it is not directly stored in the database. We update the complete package, right? So we update the complete product information together with the images. If that's good or bad, I leave that up to you, I think since the products are not that big of an entity we can do it like that but maybe if you want to use bigger entities so a product might have much more information and maybe you have more users or administrators moderators whatever that can update the the same products at the same time then you may want to implement this differently meaning at endpoints where you just add an image, delete an image, and so on, and you do that directly. But in this case, your your controller would look totally different anyways. So you would have functions that work directly with the images in this case. I think you get the idea. But in our specific case here for the smaller products, I think it's totally fine to just say, we have our product images, and these are the db product images and then we want to remove them so we say context images and then remove range and these are all our product images all right so with that they are marked for removal it is this this is important this really is executed with the safe changes async down here so we do not need an extra transaction here we do not have to do this manually meaning begin the transaction and then end the transaction, commit all this. 
So we can just say we want to first remove all the images and then we say the new images are our product dot images, right? So not these images that are currently on the database. We then want to set all the new images here that we get with this product image. What's changing then are the IDs. So if you think you need the same IDs for whatever reason, then this would not work. But in our case, this works totally fine. So again, I know it's it's just three lines of code and I'm talking a lot about that, but this is important. I hope you get this, you get the idea here. So since we're only using these images for the products, we can remove all, all of them and then add all the images back that are left. And of course, maybe there are new images for this product then or new, new images were added in the front end. And with that, we can add them to the database. Okay, and this is everything we have to change on the server, all right? So that's it. This is how we update the product images. Let's save this. And now let's go to the client, back to the uh, edit product razor file, not the CSS file, the razor file. And in here now, we now add our remove button to remove an image. So we go way up. Where is it? Here we see the image data. So this is our image tag. And now let's add a button. And again, the design will be horrible. But when we add Mudblazer, this, this should look a bit better. So type is button here. Again, this is important because we're using an edit form. And if you would not uh, add this here, that this button is of type a button, then this would work like a submit button, like the one down here, there it is, right? There should only be one submit button. So don't forget to add the type button here. And now on click, we will call a function on click and we need the image ID. So we will use the lambda expression here and call this method then remove image with the image ID and the text will also be just remove. All right, so this is our button. And now again, we go down to the bottom of this page. And in here now we say void remove image with the ID of the image. And Visual Studio is jumping around because this is, I think this is a bigger file here. If we would use a code behind file, could totally do that as well. And then this should not happen anymore, but maybe you see it down here on the bottom right, there is a new version available. So maybe this is fixed already. But now for this method here, what we want to do is we say var image is product images first or default where the image ID is the given ID. And if this image is not now, then Visual Studio is jumping around. And after that, we say product images remove image. And that's it. Don't know why it's telling me that here are any errors, but anyways, we say Visual Studio, I'm okay with that. Don't want any trouble. So let's just stop the application, run it again. There is indeed a build error. Okay, I forgot a parenthesis. Let's see, edit product razor. And Okay, maybe up here. Yes, indeed. There is a parenthesis missing. All right. But now I hope build succeeded. Okay, maybe I need more coffee. Let's see. So back to the administration section. We've got the Lord of the Rings. Edit this. There it is. Beautiful. See that? We've got the image and the remove buttons. And maybe we remove 
something in the middle. So let's say this here and maybe the last one. Then we update the product again. It's reloading and we've only got three images left. And as you can see here now, run this again, execute. We see these three images. And when we now add images back like these two again, we can do that as well. Update. There they are. We hit execute. Six, seven. See the IDs are not correct anymore, of course. Now what's happening if we remove this thing here and add it back, for instance, update the products. Execute. There it is. IDs one, two, six, seven, eight, right? But we've got our images everything still works. Okay, and this is how we actually use multiple images, upload multiple, multiple images for our products, but now we want to display them, right? We want to display them on the product page, on the product list, and so on. And to do that now, finally, let's use Mudblazer. So in the next lecture, we start by installing Mudblazer. All right, now to install Mudblazer. The easiest way to do that by yourself is just Googling Mudblazer install. And there the first hit, it is already, or you scroll a bit down and then you see this guy here. He's got a YouTube video where he's also explaining how to install Mudblazer and also use some uh, layouts here for your page. So maybe you wanna have a look, but I'm pretty sure that these guys here also create great videos about Mudblazer and Blazer in general. So maybe if you wanna go a bit deeper regarding Mudblazer and the layouts and so on, check out the several YouTube channels here. But now let's focus on our e-commerce store. So let's click on this link and then we come to the installation page. And there are actually two ways to install and use Mudblazer. First, we've got templates. So what we can do here, there you see it, you can use the .NET templates for Mudblazer. And when these are used, you already got, uh, again, your, if you wanted to, your ASP.NET Core hosted project or solution with a client project server and the shared one, but not with the layout of uh, the typical Blazor and Bootstrap solution. In this case, then you would uh, use the Mudblazer layouts. And as you can see here with host Wasm, this would then be an ASP.NET Core hosted uh, Blazor WebAssembly project. But this is not what we are going to do here. We've already got a project. So this uh, is recommended to do if you wanna start from scratch with a new project, but we already have a project. So we do the manual installation, meaning we add the Mudblazer package first, you can either use the CLI here or what we can also do is we can stop this uh, project here again. And then for our client project, we manage the new get packages. We look for Mudblazer. There it is. And we just install it. All right. Hit OK. Accept. And Mudblazer should be installed. As always, we can double check. And there it is, version 6.0.9 in my case here. But after that, we have to configure this thing a little bit. So first, the imports. We have to add them to our imports razor file. There is already in here using Mudblazer. And the next thing is fonts and style references. We do that in our index HTML. So let's go here and up here. Now we add this stuff. Now, if you only want to use Mudblazer, you could actually remove bootstrap. So you could remove bootstrap here, for instance, but let's just keep it there. So everything works, still works. After that, the script reference, we do that down here. All right. Removing again, you could remove it, the older references if you want to. And then the almost last thing is the mud services. We add them here in the program CS. 
Let's add them maybe here. And don't forget to also add the using directive here for mod blazer services. And then the last thing, add the following components to your main layout razor. And please note that the theme provider is essential for mod blazer, but the rest is optional. So we've got the, the we've also got the dialog provider and the snack bar provider. So if you want to use these components, just add or make sure to also add uh, the uh, providers here uh, but now in our shop layout it is in our case we add also these three but I think we only need the mud theme provider because for now don't know what's coming next maybe in the future but for now we uh, only need the mud theme provider but later maybe also dialogue and snack bar provider all right, so this should be it with that mud blazer should be installed. And now we can actually use it to display the images in the administration section first. And after that, we will add a carousel on the actual product details page. So let's use mud blazer then in the admin section next. So first we go back to our edit product page, right? So in here we've got our for each already with the typical image tag and the button tag, but this is what we wanna remove now. So maybe let's just comment this out first, make sure to select everything. So this works here. Okay, now it is commented out. And now let's use mud blazer. The very first thing I want to add is an actual mud cart. And this already tells you that we've got some styling here with that. We've got some spacings. We can also change the spacings, meaning the margins and the paddings and so on. We can change the colors. Lots of stuff we can do and change and so on with mud blazer. But I like when you already use a UI component or library, then I really like uh, it the way it already is. And I love it when I don't have to change lots of stuff. You, it, you know, most of, uh, most of the time you still have to change a little bit of the CSS and we also have to do it here in the next minutes, but it's not much. And if you already watched the whole course, you will see that we actually did a lot of CSS by ourselves. We had to write lots of CSS and this should change when you use Mud Blazor for the complete application. So let's just use the Mud Card here, long story short. And then the next thing we can do is we use the Mud Card content and in that now we use mud image and here we can say the source so you see the parameter source is now the image data all right and after that we can use mud card actions so mud card actions and in here now we will find our button our button to remove this uh, this image here so mud button it is not the typical button it's now a mud button with a variant and this variant is now variant filled and let's have a look at these components in a minute so you will see what is actually possible so then we can change the color to color point error i hope that then we get a red color with this and after that we say on click and here again our method so this would be remove image with the image id don't forget the parenthesis and then our text remove and this should be it actually forgot the parenthesis here. Okay, now this is correct. And maybe we can put this in a new line so we can see all at once. Still the formatting not really working. 
kinda. Okay. I'm pressing Alt, Shift, and F, but it's, well, not, not that nice. But anyways, this is now our mod card with a button. And I can already tell you we have to add some CSS here, but let's let's have a quick look already. So let's start the application. There it is. And as you can see, got some spacing here, right? Got the button here, nice elevation. Okay, it is nice, but they are all in in uh, in a new line and I really don't like this. Also the remove button could be placed a bit better. So maybe we can change it a little bit. So the first thing I would do is the mud card actions, they have a style parameter. So here we can say justify content and then center, save that, let's have a look. Is it refreshing? Yes, it is. We're getting there, we're getting there. I promise you, we're getting there. Let's also add some styles here for the diff. I know that's inline. Shouldn't do that. We can add classes as well. So let's say we add display flex, flex wrap is wrap otherwise we would have to scroll horizontally flex direction is a row so now these images should be next to each other and with justify content center they should also be centered saved it and there they are Okay, we need a little bit of spacing here. So let's add one more thing for the mud cart. We add a class and this should be maybe margin all MA and let's say one. How does that look? Yep, already better I'd say. What about two? Okay, maybe we can leave it at that. What do you think? I think that's that's already nice, right? So you see, we have, we still have to manually change it, tweak it a little bit, but it already looks better. We've got this card, we've got the shadows, we've got a button with a nice elevation. And now let's have a quick look here when we uh, go back to mud blazer and then we can look for all these components so for instance the mud card note that we've got an api documentation and also the uh, examples here and these are now the examples for the mud card you see that the buttons look a bit differently so i use something else you can use media so you could use the image here for the mud card there is a mud card media component that you we, we could have used, but in this case, you don't see the complete image, right? So it is uh, th the cover styling is used, meaning maybe we would not uh, see the complete image here of this book cover. We would just see, I don't know, maybe off the rings. So it is cut out. I, I think you, get, you know what I mean. So this is the mud card and regarding the button, for instance, um, yep, that's the one you see it here. This is the button we use and here is then the variant and also the color as you can see and here what does color primary or color secondary mean? Well, there are color, color palettes that come with Mud Blazer and you can change them as well. So lots and lots of stuff you can do, but this should not be an in-depth, well, lecture about Mud Blazer. We still only want to upload images, but use Mudblazer, Mudblazer here for a first little introduction. And this already looks nice, I think. You see here the uh, comparison to the bootstrap button, and this is now the Mudblazer button. I leave it up to you what's better. And uh, now, of course, we can remove this. I was hoping we can remove this, but now I can error. No, that's not the error. Let's see. Remove it. Nope. Okay, what's going on here? 
image ID. Jesus, why didn't you tell me? So it is rebuilding. Or is there an error now? Okay, now we've got an error. Image ID, where is it? Okay, I don't know why, but we have to stop the app, run it again. And I think now it's reloading, okay. All right, and now removing an image works. Updates. And we only got four images now. All right, so now this is done. We see all the images. Let me save that again. But of course we're not done with the complete section because this was just the administration of a product so now what's left is actually the carousel so we want to use the mud carousel that's another component where you can run through all the images on the product details page so let's do that next all right so we want to use the carousel so let's have a look here there is the carousel of Mud Blazer. This is what we want to use here. Again, lots of ways to configure this. So, well, let's see how this works now for our images. And we do that now on the product details page. So we go here. There it is in our pages folder, product details it is. And there's actually not that much we have to do. We see this thing here, right? So we display the image that is used in the image URL. But again, let's check first if we got an image URL. In this case, we do exactly that. But otherwise, if we do not have an image URL, we just assume that there are a bunch of images available. Well, if not, we just display no image at all. But if we got some images, then we will use the MUT carousel. So first the if. So add if, and again, if string is not null or empty, our product image URL. Now in this case, we use the old way. And otherwise, we use mud blazer with the mud carousel. That's the one. All right. And in here now, we say already, let's use a class. And the class I want to use is mud with full. All right. Now the items source, right? So this kind of is a built in for each or for loop. And to make this work, we need an items source. So this is a list and this is simply our images list. And another thing I already want to add is another style. We just set the height to 200 pixels. All right. Okay. So that's that. And now for every single item here, which is our image, we use this item template. And this is pretty simple. We just again use the mud image. The source is then in our case, the data of this image, but it's not called image in our case, or in this specific mud blazer case, you call this thing context or it is called context and with context, then you get the actual object. And as you can see here, IntelliSense is already showing you that this is an image in our case, because we've got the list of images here. And uh, with that, we can access the data property. And that's everything. We are already done. So let's save this. And the app is rebuilding. Yep, it's loading. So now let's go to the books. Go here. And there is our carousel. Well, the styling is not the best. Give you that. But maybe on mobile, it looks a bit better. So here on the smartphone, we get our carousel now and we can just run all these images, run through them. We can select 
uh, these little dots here and it is out auto cycling and again if you want to change something here's how to do that right so there are parameters to show the image uh, the arrows or not the bullets or not bullets not points not dots it's the bullets and uh, you can also disable the auto cycle and you do all that again with the parameters where are they there they are okay they're using the variables here but you see the parameter is called show error arrows english arrows show bullets and auto cycle this is what you have to do and you can i think also change the colors there's a it's, here it is white and i think i think i think i don't know it yet but i think there is somewhere there is of course the option to change the color of the bullets and the arrows at as well and then you're done and see this here doesn't this look nice love that okay so the carousel works and there's one last thing we have to do because maybe you've seen it already here on the product list and also for the featured images we would not see an image and here we actually do not see an image so what we can do here in this case instead of the carousel well of course we could use the carousel as well but maybe you just want to show or display the first image of all the images so let's do that next in the products page the product list and the featured products we only show the first image of a list of images with no image url so if there is no image url we will display the first image all right let's do that next all right let's start with our products page so here in the admin section we've got our virtualize component and here you see image url right and you already know what we're going to do again we need our if here so add if string is null or empty product image url in this case we use our image here but let's do that inside the td tags here so that's the one okay still i'm still fighting with the formatting don't know what's happening there and in the other case let's say else if so we're really checking if the product images don't need the add here of course product images count yep, not concat it's the count i'm looking for if this is greater than zero only in that case then uh, we use this so we just say image source is in that case product images and then zero for the first one and then the data okay and something is wrong here close that and now everything is okay formatting does not really work but anyways we saved it we start the app and let's have a quick look did it rebuild i don't know so let's go to the products and yep this works so there is our image now and now let's do in essence the same for the featured products and also the product list so here now in our shared folder down here again we check add if string is null or empty the product image url in that case we display this thing here and otherwise else if products 
images count greater than zero. And in this case, we say image source is product images first one data. All right, let's save that. And when we go to our homepage here, of course, these are all our featured products. But now when we go to our products page, and let's say this is not featured anymore. And instead, this is featured. Don't know what happened here to the styling. All right, this looks better. And let's say this is featured, update product. And now we go to our homepage and we see the Lord of the Rings. Isn't that nice? So these are the featured images or the featured products. And now the last step is the products list. Here you see no image. So let's go back to Visual Studio. And here's the product list component. And down here we see our link. So again, add if and then string is null or empty product image URL. We want to use this thing here. All right, and else if the product images count again, count is greater than zero. And in that case, kind of do the same but we just use images zero and then the data. Save this. And again, let's have a look. And there it is already. We see the Lord of the Rings and here's our carousel. And as you can see, this works as well. Great. So there you have it. This is how to upload multiple images, use Mudblazer for the carousel and so on and so on. Again, if you want more, check out the preview. Info card was already up here. So uh, you have to check the info cards, click the I, and then you will see the info card for the preview or go down to the video description and then you will be able to enroll to this course. So thank you very much for watching already. If you liked it and maybe learned something, then thank you so much for for clicking the like button and subscribing to my channel and clicking the bell icon for a notification when a new video is online. Maybe you also want to join my newsletter for early access of these videos, other courses and the upcoming .NET Web Developer Bootcamp. This is a big one. So maybe this is also interesting for you. And last not least, and still my empty coffee cup here. Thank you so much for all my supporters. I love you guys. Maybe you also want to support my channel here and me and my family. Thank you very much. Then check out the links in the video description. And the last thing now, guys, maybe you're interested in other videos. Here they are see that on the side then if you are then just click on this thing and enjoy lots and lots of other blazer and .NET stuff so thank you very much for your time thank you very much for watching and i hope i see you next time take care